Hi everyone, I am Cesar Bipunshi, Indirect Tax Expert at ClearTax, and today we all are here to understand about how to prepare GST 9 and 9C form. So we are going to go in detail about how to prepare 9 and 9C form. Along with that, we'll also take your queries like what are the most common issues we face while we prepare GST 9 and 9C, and what are the prerequisites to even file your GST 9 and 9C. So before we even start our today's session, I just want to check if you all are able to hear me or not. So if you are able to hear me, just say hi on the chat box. Great. So it seems like everyone is able to hear me. So with this, we'll just start our today's session, which is a live workshop on GST 9 and 9C. So just to brief about 9, so we all know that this 9 and 9C both are the annual returns, which has to be filed for the entire year. And we also have a due date for the same and the due date for both the 9 and 9C is your 31st December. So that's the due date. Now in today's session, I'm going to focus mainly for the financial year 21-22 because that's the GST 9 which we have to file by 31st December 2022. So we'll just focus on this. <coughs> Sorry. So now if you ask me like who exactly is required to file 9 and 9C, so every taxpayer who is registered as a normal taxpayer is required to file GST 9 at the GST level, which means we all understand that if let's say today my turnover, right, it turnover is let's say 5 crore. In that case, I have to file my GST 9 for all of my GSTNs irrespective of whether for the respective GST and whether my turnover is more than 2 crore or not. So here, if we just talk about GST 9, that limit is 2 crore. So if your annual aggregate turnover is more than 2 crore, then GST 9 is applicable. And if we talk about GST 9C form, the aggregate, the limit over here is 5 crore. So if your annual aggregate turnover is greater than 5 crore, then your GST 9C is applicable to all of you. And when it comes to filing, we always have to file for each and every GST if my turnover exceeds the threshold limit and whenever i compute the turnover i always have to compute at a pan level that is how we compute the turnover and again when i'm talking about my aggregate turnover i don't have to include my inward supply which is liable to rcm i always have to focus on my outward supply now that's irrespective whether that outward supply is exempted supply or taxable supply i have to club both this supplies and accordingly decide if I have to file my 9 or 9C, right? So this is about who exactly is required to file a 9 and 9C. Now here also, when we talk about filing 9 and 9C, taxpayer who is required to file GST 1 and 3B, whether it's a quarterly filing or the monthly filing, irrespective of that, taxpayer who is registered as a regular taxpayer is required to file GST 9 and 9C, which means if you are a casual taxable person or you are an ISD or a non-resident taxable person or you are a tax deductor or you have taken registration as a tax collector or you have opted for a composition scheme, then this 9 and 9C form is not for you. You don't have to file 9 and 9C. So here you are required to file this 9 and 9C only when you are, are registered as a regular taxpayer, which means you are filing your GST 1 and GST 3B. In that particular case, you are required to file your GST 9 and 9C. Here, when it comes to due date, the due date for filing your 9 and 9C is 31st December 2022. That's a due date. And the one of the important part over here is that once your GST 9 is filed or once your GST 9C is filed, you cannot revise it. So it really becomes very important that whenever you're filing your 9 and 9C, you're filing the correct return. Because if you don't file the correct return, there is no option to revise that return. So we have to always look into that thoroughly before even filing our GST 9 and 9C. And in case we don't file, so if let's say my turnover was more than 2 crore in case of 9 or my turnover is more than 5 crore in case of 9C and I don't file that GST 9 or 9C on time, which means I don't file my 9 and 9C by this 31st December 2022 for FI 21-22. In that particular case, there's a late fees and the late fees is 200 rupees per day. So that's the late fees which I have to pay in case I don't file my 9 and 9C. So this was all about just a brief, right? Like who exactly is required to file, when they're exactly required to file, what if they don't file it? Now let's go into the important section, which we are going to understand, which is understanding how to prepare your GST 9. 
what are the different tables of this GSTR 9? How to even fill that different tables of GSTR 9? What are the problems which we face while we are preparing GSTR 9? What are the prerequisites we should have? What are the information we should have handy before even filling or preparing your GSTR 9? So if I just talk about annual return, right, which is GSTR 9, GSTR 9 have a different parts. There is one part one which talks about basic detail. Then there's part two which talks about detail of outward supply and the inward supply RCM. There's part three which talks about details of ITC avail and the ITC reversal. Then we have part four which talks about detail of taxes paid. Then we have part five which talks about amendment in return related to uh, FI 21. 22 because right now I'm referring to FI 21 22. So whatever the amendment which is related to FI 21 22 but have been done in the next year, then we have to show that information in part five. And then there is a part six, which is other information. Like we have to give the information regarding demand reference or we have to give some information related to supply, which is received from the composition tax payers and all of that thing. Right. So these are the different tables of GSTR 9. But to understand how to prepare this GSTN 9, we have divided this all the parts into different tables. So we have categorized this into three main parts. One is related to the liability and the taxes paid. Then the second one is related to your ITC and its reversal. And the third part is your other section. Right. So these are the three main parts which we, are, we have divided this entire GSTN 9 form. Now, let's first focus on the first part, which is related to your liability and the taxes paid. So if I just talk about the first part, which is related to your liability and the taxes paid. So here, if I just talk about liability and taxes paid, right, we have table number four, we have table number five, we have table number nine, we have table number 10, we have table number 11, and we have table number 14. So these are the different tables of GSTR 9 form which is related to your liability and the taxes paid. So these are main tables when it comes to the GSTR 9. So uh, let me do one thing. Uh, just give me a one second. I will just show you how exactly the forms looks like so that you understand this form in detail. And then maybe I will take uh, you through this in different tables of your GSTR 9. So just give me one second. So here, if I just talk about like a different table, right? Let me uh, present my screen and you can let me know if you are all are able to see my screen or not. So I have just shared my screen. So are you able to see my screen? Yes, so you all are able to see my screen. So if I just talk about the liability and the taxes paid, right? So we have this table number four. As I told you, we have table number four. We have table number five, table number nine, table number 10, table number 11, and table number 14. So these are the different tables of GSTN 9 where we actually fill this information in relation to the liability, right? The liability could be in respect of my outward supply. The liability could be in respect of my inward supply, which is liable to reverse charge. Along with that, it also has some information we do, where I don't have to pay any liability for some more of my outward supply, which is more of my sales part, right? So that is what this table actually shows. Now, if you look into this table number four, right? In the table number four, there is something called 4A, 4B, 4C, 4D, 4E. All of this information is given where the government is actually asking for certain breakups. So they're asking, okay, tell me what is your B2C or tell me what is your B2B? What is your zero rated ex or like zero rated supply? What is your supply to an SCZ or what is your deemed export or what are the advances on which you have paid the taxes? And then there is a 4G which talks about the inward supply which was liable to reverse charge where you have paid the taxes under the reverse, reverse charge but it's your kind of a purchase, right? So these are some breakups they have asked for that tell me the breakups when it comes to your total outward supply where you are liable to pay any liability. If we look into table number five, again, this is nothing, but it's all about your outward supply. But here you don't have to pay any taxes. For example, if this is, this is an exempt supply or if it is a nil rated supply or a non GST supply, or even if it's a zero rated supply where it's an export, but you are not liable to pay taxes because you have filed LUT. So, so export without payment of tax, or maybe you are supplying an SCZ. But again, there you are again going with a without payment of tax. So all that information comes in your table number five. 
so this is something where you have an outward supply where there is no liability when we talk about table number 4 it is again your outward supply but you have certain liability except for the 4g 4g is one thing where it's a inward supply but you are liable to pay the taxes under the reverse charge right so this is table number 4 this is table number 5 uh, and it has lot of breakups over here then along with that we have table number 9 when we look into table number 9 this table number 9 is nothing but it just shows that okay what is the tax payable which is coming and what is the taxes which you have paid through cash or whatever the taxes you have paid through itc so that is the information which is there in table number 9 then we have table number 10 and 11 10 and 11 nothing uh, should, it just talks about the tell me all your supplies which is related to your fy 2122 but the liability has been shown in the next year so that is what is shown in table number 10 and 11 so this was just a brief right this was just about the tables but here we are actually uh, and we actually have to understand that what information how exactly we are going to fill this different tables are there any tables which is optional nature that i don't even fill it right so what exactly we have to do over there so this is something which we are going to discuss in today's session right so till now we just said that okay there are some tables which is related to your outward supply and the liability and the tables are table number 4 table number 5 table number 9 table number 10 table number 11 table number 14 so this were the different tables which is related to the liability and the outward supply now if we just look into this information we say that how exactly we are going to even fill this information and also since it has a lot of breakups it talks about okay tell me what is your b2c tell me what is your b2b tell me your credit notes tell me about your debit notes tell me about certain amendments which you had done in the same year so you have to give all such information when it comes to table number 4 right so today before even filling this information in table 4 or table 5 or table number 9 or table number 10 or 11 let me just ask you a simple question right and that one simple question is that whenever we are filling right the one of the prerequisite which should always maintain is that do the reconciliation between your gst1 gst3 b and the books of account so whenever i am filling the information in respect of my liabilities i should first do the reconciliation between my gst1 gst3 b and the books of account right we should always do the reconciliation okay i could see amandeep is saying that why is this not coming is it with everyone or is it only with the uh, okay abhinav says audio is okay all right then maybe uh, amandeep you have to just check at your end so here when i was talking about that if we are filling this information right so we have to see do we have to fill with gst1 or 3b or my books of account so one important part do the reconciliation and whenever you are doing a reconciliation between 1 3b and the books of account if there is no difference for that fy 21 22 we don't have to worry about it's very easy for us to even fill this tables but in case there are certain differences there is a important part which we should understand that how to even fill this different tables right so assuming a very happy case there was no difference between your gst1 3b and the books of account everything was matching perfectly you just have to populate table number 4 basis your file gst1 that's the simple way you can do that right because anyhow your file gst1 have all this breakup it has the information that what is b2c what is b2b what is your supply to an scz and all all the breakups are already available in your file gst1 uh, but that information is not available in your gst3 b because 3b has the information in relation to payment but it does not have this breakups and all right So it's always good that you, in case there is a difference, just go ahead and file this basis your GSTR one. But let's see if there is a differences, right? So here, if we have differences, one important part which we should always understand that while we are filing GSTR nine or while we are preparing GSTR nine for FY twenty one twenty two, we have to report all the liability which is related to FY twenty one twenty two. irrespective of whether the taxes for the same have been paid in the same year or the taxes for the same has been paid in the next year or the taxes for the same is still not paid right so whenever i am saying that whenever we have to prepare gst9 and whenever i have to report my all the outward supplies or the liability 
I always have to look into what was my entire liability or the supply which is related to FY2122 irrespective of in which year I have actually paid the taxes. Right. So I will give you a few examples. Think about uh, a very normal case and you only have to answer me this. Think about that you had some B2C supplies, right? It was a normal B2C supply and you had uh, made some supplies. You have sold something to, let's say, Mr. A, which he was an unregistered person. You have raised an invoice on 1st April 2021. So you have raised one invoice on 1st April 2021 to Mr. A. Now you have also filed this correctly in your GST of 1. For the same financial year, which is financial year 21-22, because right now we are referring to FI 21-22. So you have also filed your GSTR 1 for the month of April 2021 on time or maybe delayed also, doesn't matter, right? But you have reported this invoice in your GSTR 1 of April 2021. My simple question to all of you, whether you are going to report this information in your GSTR 1 or not. There was one B2C invoice which you have issued to a customer on 1st April 2021. You have also reported this correctly in your GST1 for the April 2021. My question was whether you're going to report this information in your GST9 for FI2122 or not. And I could see an answer from uh, Prithvi who says yes, Santosh says yes, Subhar says yes, Nishit says yes, Suma says yes, Panik says and everyone saying yes. And that's obviously the right answer, right? Because here we are preparing TGS 10 9 for FI 21 22, and this info in particular invoice relates to FI 21 22. So we have to report this information. Let me give you na, another simple example, or maybe let's take another example here. Let's say there was one invoice which you have issued to Mr. A on 31st March 2021. You have issued one invoice to Mr. A on 31st March 2021. But you forgot to report this information while you are filing your GST1 for the month of March 2021. Right? Because here we are filing for FI2122. So you forgot to file or you report this particular invoice while you are filing your GST1 for March 2021. You realized your mistake. You you remember, okay, okay, I made a mistake. And what you have done? In the month of April 2021, you have filed an amendment. We know we have an option to file an amendment. So I have filed B2CSA. So there is a section called B2CSA. So I have filed B2CS amendment on April 2021 by showing that, okay, the original return period is your March 2021. And I have given the correct summary now in April 2021. My question to all of you is, and I think Amandeep have also given the answer. So my question to all of you, whether we have to report this particular information in respect of this particular invoice, whether this will be coming in my FI2122 GST9 or not. I could see answer from uh, Abhinav says no, uh, Piyush says no, Suma says no, Rahul says no. All right, so everyone is saying no, and which is again the correct answer. Right. So there was an amendment which is done in April 2021 in respect of the original return period, which is FY 2021. Right. So in that particular case, you don't have to even report this particular advice. So now why I even ask this question, you should remember that if there are certain cases like this, right. So if you just even go and see government GST9 auto computer detail. So there is obviously the government auto computer entire table number four faces the file GST1. But when you just see this information in table number four, a the government actually add this transition. So you have to make sure even when this is added, you have to remove that information from there. So if you have certain kinds of transition, you should remove that information while you are preparing your GST and nine for FI2122. So this information should not be added in table number 4A for FI2122 because this is not related to your financial year 2122. Now, let me give you another example. And this is a very common mistake which usually happened with, uh, by many of us. Now, what happened? Uh, there was a case where there was an invoice which you have issued to your customer. Let's again, it's a B2C invoice. And you have issued this invoice on 31st March 2022, right? So 31st March 2022, you have issued this invoice to a customer. Let's say Mr. B, you have issued this invoice. But again, what happened? You forgot to add this invoice. 
on 31st march 2022 you issued the invoice to a customer but you forgot to add this particular invoice while you are filing your gst1 for the month of march 2022 you realized your mistake right when you realized your mistake let's say you realized this mistake in the month of september 2022 So when you realized your mistake in September 2022, you still have an option to amend. But what happened? Uh, instead of amending that, you have not amended. What you have done? Instead of amending that March 2022 return, or you are telling that okay, there is a B2Cs amendment. What you have done? You have directly added this particular invoice while you are filing your GST one for the month of September. So while you are filing September 2022 GST one. You have added this invoice in your B two C S summary because we know that anyhow we send the uh, summary to the government when it comes to B two C S transaction. So we have added this particular invoice in that B two C S summary for the month of September rather than amending this particular document or in the return period September twenty twenty two. My question to you is whether this invoice needs to be added while we are filing G S T nine for F Y twenty one twenty two. Rahul is if invoice date is thirty first March and add in GS twenty one twenty two GS ten nine. Patho says yes. Devnesh says yes. Uh, Ramakrishna says yes. Pratik says yes. Prashant says yes. Everyone says yes. And which is again the correct answer. So even if you have wrongly reported this as a B two C as summary in the month of the September twenty twenty two, still you have to add this particular invoice while you are filing your GST nine for F Y twenty one twenty two because this invoice actually relates to F Y twenty one twenty two and not the next year. So this invoice needs to be added over here, right? Now let me take another example. What happened? There was a normal B two B invoice, and we know uh, the B two B invoice we send the document level information to the government. So when we send the document level information to the government. uh what happened i missed reporting one invoice in the month of let's say march 2022 so i forgot to report this particular invoice in my gst1 so i have just ingested i imported this invoice in my gst1 for the month of may and this information would be at a document level so i added this particular invoice in my gst1 for the month of may 2022 where the document date over here was let's say 31st march 2022 my question to all of you again is that whether this invoice will be included While I am filing my GST nine for FY twenty one twenty two or not, I could say Rahul says yes, Patik says yes, Divyesh says yes, Subha says yes, Lichu says yes. All right, so everyone is saying yes, which is again the correct answer because this invoice relates to FY twenty one twenty two. This invoice has to be added in my GST one of FY twenty one twenty two. right so i think now this part is very clear to all of you in short if i summarize right while i'm reporting my liability and my turnover or my supplies outward supplies in my gst9 i should not worry about whether the payment again the same has been paid in the same year or in the next year or even it is not paid whether it is reported or not reported doesn't matter what matters is that if it is related to fy 21 22 it should fall in your gst 9 for fy 21 22 so this is something which we should always remember that while you are preparing gst 9 you need to report all your outward supplies related to fy 21 22 in your gst 9 this is one part but now the second important part is we know that we talked about table number 4 table number 5 table number 10 and table number 11 Question is that when to report the information table number four and five and when to report the information table ten and eleven. So for that, what we have to do, if there is some liability which is related to your FY twenty one twenty two and the taxes for the same is also paid in the same year, liability related to FY twenty one twenty two and the taxes for the same is also paid in FY twenty one twenty two. In that particular case, that liability has to be shown in your table number. Four and five, right? Liability related to the and right now let's whenever I'm saying F I twenty one twenty two is a current year, so I will say current year as F I twenty one twenty two. Whenever I'm saying next year, assume I'm talking about April twenty one till October twenty twenty two. Sorry, April twenty twenty two till October twenty twenty two. Whenever I'm saying previous year, I'm always referring to the twenty twenty one. Right? So that is what I'm referring here. So current year when I'm saying current year, it is always F I twenty one twenty two. right so wherever my liability is related to the current year and the taxes are also paid in the current year gst year 3 b in that particular case this information needs to be reported in table number 4 and 5 right 
wherever there is a liability which is related to the current year and the taxes for the same has been paid in the next year in that particular case this has to be reported in table number 10 and 11 and wherever which the liability which is related to the current year and the taxes are still not paid then that information has to be reported in table number 4 and 5 so in way to just summarize you just have to first fill table number 10 and 11 and then you fill the table number 4 how you have to do it if there was some liability which was related to the current year and you have paid in your gst 3b of the next year which is you have paid that liability from april 2022 till october 2022 then report that information in table number 10 or 11 but other whatever the remaining turnover the liability which you have or the supply of the liability you have report in table number four and five so that is how we are going to fill the table number four table number five and table number 10 and 11. right so this is how i'm going to fill but now we also understand that there are certain breakups over here it asks for that okay there is some 4a 4b 4c 4d now question is what is optional nature what is mandatory in nature right so here if you just see there are a lot of information which government have already come up with but what they have done let's say there is a credit note right there's a debit note information in respect of the transaction uh, if there is a credit note in relation to b2b or maybe a zero data supply or supply to an scc and all so we all know that today while we file gst1 credit note for all this transition has to be shown separately the debit note is shown separately but when it comes to b2c transition the b2cs right for b2cs transaction we always give a summary to the government we always sh show the net figure to the government right so here the government is not asking for the credit debit note separately when it comes to the b2c but when it comes to your other sections like b2b and all they always ask the separate thing like okay report the credit note separately debit note separately when it comes to the other section but there is also a b2c large section so if we talk about file gst1 right in the file gst1 we do also have the b2c large so here that b2c large information will also come under 4a itself because 4a consists of b2c s as well as b2c large right so even for the b2c large you give a document level information to the government still here when we talk about they just ask for the net information give me the net of the credit debit note information over here in table number 4a so that is how they ask for the different information when it comes to filing your gst9 but now the thing is okay they were asking the separate information that okay tell me that there is some credit note or there is some debit note which is in relation to all of this above which is from 4b to 4g or if there is something called if there is certain amendment which has been done in the same year right there was amendments which was related to fi 21 22 and also that is been done in fi 21 22 itself so where exactly we have to report so we always show okay in table number four itself you have to show that information so if there is some amendment which was related to current year and also that amendment has been done in the same year then that information is shown in table number four but now because we know again it will complicate the things right so if my file if let's say i'm filing my gst1 3b and books and all of these three are matching then it's not even a problem but if it is not matching then it actually becomes a problem so to report all these breakups and all actually becomes a problem so what they have done they're like okay we make optional in nature you don't give this information rather you just give me this information and here itself you can give me a net impact let's say if b2b you have total invoices of 1 lakh rupees and credit note is 20,000, so you directly report 80,000 here rather than showing 1 lakh over here and then under the credit notes showing the 20,000 separately so that is what they have done that it's optional nature it's again on you whether you want to give this entire breakdown or not and if you don't want to give this breakdown that also it's okay this is again optional in nature it's on you whether you want to fill this information or you don't want to fill this information so this was about that breakup that what exact information is optional in nature where i can skip even filling this information and i can just show the aggregated figure over here so this was about table number four in the same way if we just talk about table number five right table number five is again nothing it just about talks about all the supplies where you don't have to pay any taxes at all for example if there's a zero rated supply without payment of taxes or there's an exam supply or nil rated supply or non gst supply right that information has to be shown in table number five now here also we see that there's a breakups and all so what they are saying again that okay we understand this 
so what you can do at least for the exempted and the nil rated right because if we look into file 3 we also we always show exempted and nil rated together so they say okay for the exempted and nil rated you can merge together and just show direct information under 5d and in respect of non gst you can always show that information separately so that is why that is how we can show this information and again when we talk about table number 5 for table number 5 they have certain breakups again over here because again there can be a credit notes again the zero rated supply right or there can be a uh, credit note against the supply to an sc sc without payment of igst so if you have certain credit note against the same against is a, a thing on you whether you want to put a net figure over here or you want to show a breakdown so it's on you is optional in nature so you may always skip giving all this information and rather you just show a net figure over here so you always have that option and you can always do that so this is something which they have come up with when it comes to table number 5 so certain information is optional in nature and certain information is like a mandatory where you actually have to give down the breakdown so this was about table number 5 right where what information is optional and what is mandatory and how exactly we have to fill and as i told you we just have to make sure that when it comes to gst9 you are only going to give the information which is related to fy2122 and when it comes to table number 4 and the 5 you are going to give the information in relation to fy2122 where either the taxes have been paid in the same year or taxes have not been paid till now right that information has to be reported in your table number 4 and 5 now when we talk about table number 9 right so table number 9 there is a tax payable and then we have tax paid through cash or tax paid through itc so when it comes to tax payable right this idly should always match with whatever the liability you are going to show in table number 4 right because if we talk about table number 5 5 anyhow have all the exempted supplies or where we don't even have to pay any liability at all but table 4 only have where uh, only have the transactions where we have to pay some taxes to the government so the tax payable which is coming the tax payable column of gst and 9 or, or i would say table number 9 of gst and 9 the tax payable information will always match with the tax payable which is coming as per your table number 4 so whatever the value which is coming from here right that value will come and sit over here so in table number 9 this tax payable will come from your table number 4 so whatever the information is coming from table number 4 will come and sit it or sit over here now there is a, another important part which we all should understand as we give a very simple example right so when we said, talked about fy2122 which is my current year for now so if i refer to current year i said that all the liability which is related to my fy2122 has to be shown in table number 4 there is no problem but when it comes to the payment which is done through cash or the payment which has been done through itc this is auto filled by the government this is auto filled by the gstn right and when this is auto filled by gstn they auto fill this basis your gstr 3b so if they are auto filling this basis gst as 3b they always refer to your fy2122 so basis what was the taxes which has been paid in fy2122 or whatever the itc which has been utilized in fy2122 that information comes comes and sit over here right but we also all understand that while we file gst as 3b there can be certain transactions which is related to my previous year which is related to my fy 2021 but i might have paid the taxes in fy 2122 that can always be the case right so if i see this part the payment through cash or the payment through itc because this is auto filled from my gst r3 when this is not even editable this is a non editable field right so this information can have certain information in respect of the taxes which i have paid in fy2122 but the liability of that same is related to my previous year because 3b never have that break up in 3b i can never tell that okay this is some liability which is related to my 2021 but i am paying this information in 2122 right so this information would never be uh, over there so here you may find certain discrepancies between the tax payable which you have shown and the payment through cash or the payment through itc so you will you can see certain differences over here but that's okay so now the important part which we should understand that okay there is a difference 
but i gave you one simple thing i talked about table number 10 and 11 i said that while you were filing your gst 9 for fy 2122 there can be certain liability which is related to the current year but the taxes for the same have been paid in the next year then show in table number 10 right so, which means the similar thing you would have already done in the previous year also. While you had filed your GST 9 for FI 2021, there was some liability which was related to FI 2021, but the taxes for the same you would have paid in FI 2122. And you would have reported the same information in table number 10 of your GST 9 of your previous year. Right? So, if in that particular case, when I look into this, the whatever the payment they are showing, right, the payment from this payment, if I reduce that information which is showing in table number 10 of my previous year GST 9 and add what I have shown in table number 11 of my previous year GST 9, then ideally this value should always match. Because I have reduced that impact in my GST 3B which is related to previous year. Right? then it will always match but again there could be another difference over here which could be in relation to that liability which you have reported in table number four but the taxes have never been paid right so there would be difference between these two only in respect of the liability which is been shown in table number four but the taxes for the same has not been paid so that impact will always be there but other than that from this information, if you reduce the value of table number 11 and or take the impact of table number 10 and 11 of previous GST and 9, then you will always be able to communicate this to the department also that, yes, I understand there is a difference between this, but I know the reasoning why there is a difference between this. This difference is because of the adjustment which I have done in my previous year and the adjustment was done in the current year, right? Uh, I could see Prithvi says that video is stuck. Uh, is it with everyone or uh, uh, is it like with only few people? Hello. Uh, whether the video is stuck with everyone or. Okay, I think some people are saying it's working. Some people are saying there's no audio. Uh, I will do one thing. Uh, if, if it's actually stuck, then let me just refresh it. Okay, now it's working for everyone. All right, so if if, if it is working, then let, let me continue. And for people, if it is stuck, I would just suggest if you can just refresh the page. Uh, so if you just refresh uh, the link, right, then it will start work, uh, working. All right, so, uh, but, okay, some people say it's not working. Uh, let me just refresh it so uh, let me also refresh it and meanwhile maybe i would suggest uh, you also to refresh it uh is it uh, working fine now or still you're facing any problem Great. So now people are saying that it's working. Then maybe we can continue with the session. So we just refer to right why there can be or when can there can be actually a difference in your table number nine. And it's okay if you have a difference. There is no problem that there is a difference. But one important part you should understand that if there is a difference, you should know why there is a difference. You should be able to explain that that okay this is the difference and this amount there is a difference because of my last year liability which I have shown in my current year GSTR 3B. Right? So this is something which we should always keep in our mind while we are preparing GST 9. When it comes to tax payable, though the government autofill this basis, you are GST 9, but you have to always remember that this information again can be editable and this information has to be filled as per the liability which you have shown in table number 4. So this is something which we should understand. So this was about table number 4, 5, table number 9. Now moving to table number 10 and table number 11, this is optional in nature, but it's always important even if it is optional in nature, right, it's always important that you fill this information. And why I'm saying that you should fill information, as I gave you an example, right, in table number nine, when you had a difference between the tax payable and the taxes paid, you were able to explain this information to the department also through GST 9 form itself if you had filled this table number 10 and 11 correctly. 
so whenever in the next year you want to see right so whenever in the next year you want to see that what actually happened then you would be able to understand only by looking into your previous year file gstr9 right so what we are actually explaining over here that table number 10 and table number 11 so whenever i refer to table number 10 and table number 11 even though even though it is optional in nature it is always good that you actually fill this information so that it always help you in avoiding or even even in replying to the notices which has been issued by the department because department may always come up and say that okay there is a difference tell me why there is a difference and if they come up with that rather than showing all the detail and all you can clearly say that hey this is the file chest and which is already available with you and you can look into this file chest and you can see table number 10 and 11 i've already reported that there was some adjustment which was related to the current year and has been shown in the next year so from here itself the values are actually matching and i have paid the correct liability right so this is what we have to always make sure that while we are filing different tables of gstr 9 how exactly we are populating this value and even if there is a difference because there can be a differences you know the reason of certain differences right um, whether my audio and video is uh, proper or are you facing any problem? All right, great. All right, so uh, now we're going to the next part, which is your table number 14. So when we talk about table number 14, right? So this is nothing but whatever the taxes or the liability I've shown in table number 10 and 11, right? The same payment I've obviously I would have paid in my GSTR 3B. So this has to be shown here. So whatever is coming in table number 10 minus 11, the value of that will come here in table number 14. So this is how we actually prepare our GSTR 9 for FY21-22 in relation to the outward supply and the liability. So what we have talked about, we refer to table number 4, table number 5, table number 9, table number 10, table number 11, and table number 14. So this were the different tables of GSTR 9, which we have actually prepared basis the GSTR 1 or GSTR 3, we all the books of accounts. So basis that we have actually prepared this information. So you should always make sure that ideally, whatever the supply is there as per the books of account is actually shown in your GSTR 9 for FY21-22. Now going to the case study. I would like to understand from you that how much you are able to understand and will you be in the position to even fill different tables of GSTR 9 if you get a lot of differences between your GSTR 1 or GSTR 3B or books of account. So let's go with the first part. Assume that in FY21-22, right, there was a liability as per your books of 100, liability as per GSTR 1 of 100, and the liability as per 3B was 100. So you have paid 100. In GSTR 1 also, you reported 100, and as per the books also, it was 100. Now my question to all of you, this liability, are you going to show in table number four? How much liability are you going to show in table number four? And how much liability you are going to show in table number 10 or table number 11? I could see the answer from Shravan. Shravan says 100, Subhad says 100, M says 100, Ami says 100, Shri Ram says 100, Gaurav says 100, Patho says table 4, 100. All right, so everyone is saying that in table number four, we have to show the 100 liability and which is again the correct answer because obviously this is the liability which is related to my FI 21-22 and I have correctly reported in my book C13B. So here 100 rupees I am going to show in my table number four. Okay, right? so this is what I am going to do. Now let's go to the next part. There was a liability as per my books 100 as per GST 100, as per my GST 3B, what I have done, I have paid only 80 rupees in my FI 21-22. The remaining difference of 20 rupees I have shown in the next year. Now my question to all of you, how much you are going to show in table number 4 and how much you are going to show in table number 10 or table number 11? I could see answer from uh, Madhusudan who says 100, table number 4. Anapurna says 100, table number 4. Shushma says table... Uh, all right, so I'm getting a different answer over here. So if you ask me, right, so what exactly we have to do? Here, what I told you that if there's a liability which is related to your current year and the taxes are also paid in the current year, all taxes are not paid till now, that liability has to be shown in table number four. And if there's some liability which is related to the current year and the taxes has been paid in the next year, then that particular case, that liability has to be shown in table number 10. 
right or if there is some liability where we have paid extra right which is related to current year but which have which has been paid extra and the same has been adjusted in the next year then that information has to be shown in table number 11 so in this particular example because 20 rupees which was related to my current year i have paid in the next year so this information has to be shown in table number 10 so if you just see here in table number 4 i am going to report 80 and in table number 10 i am going to report 20 so this is how i am going to report this information in my gstr 9 now let's go to the next one. What happened that there was a liability and when we talk about the liability, which again, obviously the entire liability was related to my current year. So as per my books, I've shown 100 as per my GST one, I have reported 80 and in 3B, I paid 100 rupees. In the next year in GST one, I reported 20. So my question to all of you, how are you going to report this information in different table of GST and 9? I could see answer from Amit says 100, Abhinav says 100, uh, okay, Pramo says 100, Am says 100, Suma says 100, table number 4, Patho says table number 400, Liju says table number 400, Sandeep says 100. So everyone is saying 100, which is again the correct answer because here my entire liability was related to the current year and the taxes was also paid correctly in my current year. So the entire information I should report in my table number 4. Right, so this is how I have to report this information. Now the next part, I have made a mistake in my turnover. Liability was correctly reported in my books as well as in my GSTR 1 as well as in my GSTR 3B. But I made a mistake while I was reporting my turnover. We know that we also show taxable value in table number 4, 5, right? So now question is that if I made a mistake, what happened? My actual turnover as per my books was 10,000. But I have wrongly reported this turnover as 9,000 in my GSTR 3B. Now my question is that while you file your GSTR 9 for FI 21-22, how exactly you are going? So liability, we understand that we are going to anyhow show 100. And the entire liability of 100, we are going to show in table number 4. Question is about the turnover, that what exact turnover we are going to report in GSTR 9. Chitra says uh, 10,000, Ami says 10,000, Praveen says 10,000, Dipesh says 10,000, Sanjay says 10,000, Chetna says all right, so everyone is saying 10,000, which is again the correct answer. So we are going to report the exact 10,000 turnover in my table number four, because that's my correct turnover, irrespective of whether I have made a mistake in my GST1 or my GST3. Right? Now the next part is what happened? I have paid extra in my 3B, which I have adjusted in my next year. So my actual turnover liability. So here my liability was 100. But what I have done in my GSTR 3B, in the current year, I have shown 110. And later I realized my mistake and I adjusted 10 rupees in the next year. Now my question to you, how much you are going to report in table number 10 or how much you are going to report in table number 11 or how much you are going to report in table number 4? I could see answer from Shushi says table 4, 110 and table number 11, uh, you show 10. All right, Sanjeev says 100, uh, Shiram says table number 400, Radha Krishna says 110 in table number 4 and 10 in table number 11, Chaitanya says 110 and 10. All right, so I'm actually getting a different answers over here. So now if I ask you, right, so what I told you that this is a liability if you have adjusted in the next year, right, whenever you have adjusted in the next year, first always fill table number 10 and 11, right, 11 in itself is a negative section. So put 10 rupees under table number 11. The rest amount 110 you have to show in table number 4. So that the next equation which you should always follow is that table number 4 plus 5 plus 10 minus table number 11, right? Should always match with the liability you have as per your books of account. So whenever you add table number 4 plus 10 minus 11, the liability should always match with your books of account. If you're able to fulfill this condition, then yes, you have fi correctly filed your GSTR 9, right? So this is how we have to fill this information, right? So in table number four, we are going to show 110 and in table number 11, we are going to fill 10 rupees, right? Now the next is what happened? You have not even adjusted it. In the previous example, we actually adjusted in 3B of the next year. But now what happened? We have not even adjusted in the next year. So what happened? My liability, actual liabilities for my books of account was 100. But in 3B, I have wrongly paid the liability of 120. I will give you a very normal example. 
that we know of the credit note. Our government don't even allow negative figures in our GSTR 3B. So when the government don't allow negative figures in GSTR 3B, and let's assume that in that particular uh, time period, right, I, I didn't have any sale in that particular state. So I was not able to adjust this particular credit note. So in April 21st uh, to March 2022, you have reported 120 and you were not able to adjust that even in the next year. My question to all of you, how are you going to report this information in GSTR 9? I could see answer from Abhinav says 4, 120, 11, 20. Ami says 120. Shinam says 120. Shushi says 4, 120. All right. So I'm actually getting a different answers over here. Now to explain one important part here. See, one thing which we should always remember. Why are we even filling table number 10 or table number 11 of GST 9? So this is one thing which we should always understand that why are we even filling table 10 and 11? Right. So we are filling this table number 10 and 11 just to understand is there any thing which is related to my current year but the taxes or things have been adjusted in the next year. If there were certain amendments adjustments which was related to my current year but the same has been done in the next year that information I go and put in table number 10 and 11. Right. That is what I do. I gave you one example where I said that in 3B, there was a liability. I have reported 80 and 20 rupees I paid in the next year, right? The 20 rupees was related to FI 21, 22. And that was the reason I showed that liability in table number 10. There was some liability I paid in the next year. This liability was related to the current year. So I showed that information in table number 10, which is perfectly okay. Second example, I said that there was some excess liability I paid in my current year. So I adjusted that information in my next year. So when I adjusted that in the next year, which means if I want to correct my next year, I have to say, okay, this is some information which is related to my previous year, right? There was something wrong happened in my previous year, which I have to adjust, which I have adjusted in the next year. And this is actually related to my next year, right? So that was the reason I showed that information in my table number 11. That is what I have done, right? Here, if we just look in this particular example, I have done nothing in my GSTR 3B for my next year. If I have done nothing in my GSTR 3B of the next year, then I'm not going to report anything in table number 10 or table number 11. I will report anything in table number 10 or table number 11 only when there was some adjustment which has been done in the next year which has been done because of my current year impact. Because I have done something wrong in my current year and I have done some adjustment in the next year, in that particular case, only I am going to show the information table number 10 and 11. Now, when you look into the same example, right? I have done nothing in 3B. In the next year, there was no adjustment done which is related to current year. So I'm not going to fill anything in table number 10 or 11, right? So I will not fill anything in table number 10 or 11 but at the same time, if you ask me in GST9, I'm only going to fill the liability which is related to my current year. Question is, what was the liability which is related to current year? The liability which was related to current year was just 100 rupees. So ultimately, when it comes to table number four, I am just going to show 100 rupees. Right? So now when you fill your entire GST9, there are two, three things which you should keep in mind. The first thing, in nine form, when it comes to the liability and when it comes to your entire outward supply, if it belongs to your FI 21, 22, then only it will come in your GST 9. Otherwise, it will not even come in GST 9. This is the first thing. If the liability is related to FI 21, 22, then only it's going to come in your GST 9 form. Otherwise, we don't even have to fill this information in GST 9 for FI 21, 22. This is one thing which we should always keep in mind. The second important point is that whatever the important liability you have to, shown in table number 4 plus 10 minus 11, table 4 plus 10 minus 11 and plus 5 also if I'm including the other example supply, so table 4 plus 5 plus 10 minus 11, whatever liability comes in or whatever your turnover comes in, the outward supply comes in, right, except for the 4G. So there, that information, that information, table 4 plus 5 plus 10 minus 11 will always match with your books of account. Remove the 4G because that's related to inward supplies, right? 
So here the second important part I said that table four plus five plus ten minus eleven, removing that four G which is invert liable invert supply liable to RCM will always match with your books of account. If it is not matching, it means you are making some mistake over there. That's the second thing. The third thing is that you are going to fill the information in table number ten or table number eleven only when you see that there were certain adjustments which has been done from April twenty twenty two till October twenty twenty two. And that adjustment was done because of my previous year. If there were certain adjustments which was done from April 2022 till October 2022 because of my previous year, then that information will come in table number 10. If your liability is increasing or if it is decreasing, then show in table number 11. Otherwise, don't fill that information table number 10 and 11. And ultimately, the remaining part you are going to fill in table number 4. Right? So this is something which we should understand. When it comes to filling your GS ten nine in respect of the outward supply and the tax liability, so this was an answer for the sixth one. Now let's focus on the second limb. So till now we just talked about liability and the taxes paid, and I hope you are able to understand all that. So now let me ask you one simple thing. First, you want to cover that ITC and the reversal part, or first you want to cover the spillover effect in respect of the liability and taxes part. Accordingly, I will take this. So first, you want to uh, cover the liability and the taxes part in respect of spillover effect. Like let's say for FY 2021, there was something done on 21, 22, or maybe for current year done in the next year. So first, you want to cover that part, or you want to first focus on the table number six, seven, which is related to ITC and the reversal. So maybe you can reply on the chat box. So accordingly, we'll take the session. All right. So everyone is saying, uh, let's talk about table number six, seven. Great. So let's talk about the ITC part now. So now the second part is about the ITC, which is also very important, and I know that lot of the confusion which we have in relation to this table number six and table number seven and table number eight, right? So now first we discussed about the liability and taxes part, which was related to table four, five, nine, ten, eleven, fourteen. So we have already filled that information. Now let's keep that aside. Now focus is on table six, table number seven. Table number eight, table number twelve, and table number thirteen. So this would be our focus area. Now, if you ask me, like related to table number six, right? Table number six is having some information in table six a. There is some information in table number six a, because here you have to listen very carefully because I am going to ask you a few things, which is interlinked between what we are showing in table six and what we are showing in table number eight b. Right. So here you just listen to this very carefully. That when it comes to six A, right? In six A, we show the ITC which has been claimed in your GSTR three B. And here this information is nothing but what is shown in four A of your GSTR three B. This is auto filled by the GSTN and it is not editable at all. So table six A is not editable at all, and this is auto filled by the GSTN, and this is filled basis your GSTR three B. And if we now go back to GSTR three B form, in GSTR three B form we have something called six A, we have something called six B, and we have something called six C. Six A has all the information in respect of the ITC which we have claimed. It could be in relation to import of goods or import of services, or maybe invoice supply liable to RCM, or maybe invoice supply from ISD, or maybe all other ITC, which means you have purchases from the registered person, right? That information we always show in six A. Oh, sorry, not six A. I would say in table number four A, right? Now four A of GSTR three B. Then when we talk about four B in GSTR three B, in four B we show some information related to reversals which we do. The reversal could be because of 42. The reversal could be because of 43. There could be reversal because of 37 or maybe 38. Rule number 38, right? There can be the reversal because of credit notes also, right? So if we now ask you today, when the government auto compute your GST 3B basis 2B, there is an ITC reversal. If there is some credit note which is appearing in 2B, that ITC reversal government do in 4B. There is a 4B others there. They show that credit note, right? So that is how the government auto fill it, right? So that is six B and six C is nothing but A minus B. That six C that value actually goes and sit in your electronic credit ledger and basis that only we decide whether interest will be levied or not, right? Now the question over here is, here in six A, 
the government is going to only tell you the information in respect of the itc which you have shown in table number 4a of gstr 3b which means only the claim part they are not going to talk about the reversal part now if you talk about credit notes right if there is some purchases you have made from the registered person there was also some credit note which has been issued by that person there is two option to with you either you show the net figure in uh, like table 4a5 right 4a5 of gstr 3b when you show the net figure here which is net of credit note that's the one way you can do right second is you go with whatever the government auto compute today because government anyhow auto compute your gstr 3b basis to be and there they take the credit note under the reversal part which means they take that information under 4b2 right so you go with that and i think majority of us go with that part but is auto filled by the gstr so they put the credit note under 4b so we also put the credit note under 4b right so if they are doing that so under 4a we ultimately only have the invoices and the debit note information we don't have the credit note information because credit note information comes in table number 4b of gstr 3b right so this is one thing you should remember because while i am explaining table number 8 right this is really very important now if you ask me 6a the government auto fill this information then we have 6b to 6h so what we have to do when it comes to filling your entire table number 6 of gstr 9 we have to fill this basis 3b itself so whatever the itc you have claimed in your gstr 3b that same information has to be shown in a uh, table 6b to 6h we just have to give certain breakups over here so with certain breakups you have to give the information that what value will be coming in 6b 6c 6d 6e and all that so here we have to just give certain breakups but this value has to be filled basis your gstr 3b only but now the other question is let's say if we have 6b also right 6b have is is something where we are talking about there is a inward supplies other than import and inward supply liable to reverse charge but it includes the supplies uh, received from scc right so in short we can say whatever the purchases we have made from the registered person that information is coming in and sitting in your 6b when we talk about 6c it is nothing but reverse charge transaction right the purchases which you have made which is covered under reverse charge is coming and sitting in 6c but this reverse charge transaction is in respect of the purchases you made from unregistered person if you have made certain purchases from unregistered person and the transaction is covered under reverse charge then that value the information comes in 6c and if there is certain transaction in respect to the purchases made from the registered person and covered under reverse charge then that information comes in sit in 6t but now the question is when we look into gstr 3b right so whenever we look into gstr 3b today we never have the break up of that what is the supply whatever the itc i have claimed because it is covered under reverse charge and this is the purchase from registered or this is the purchase from unregistered that information is never there we only tell okay in liability side in 3.1d we always show okay this is a liability in respect of the reverse charge similarly when it comes to the itc part right itc we show okay and the import of services this is an itc and other than import of services if it is covered under reverse charge this is my entire liability uh, entire itc i never show the break up that what is the purchase from registered or what is the purchase from unregistered so that break up is never there when we look into our gstr uh 3b ka form right but here the government is asking for certain break up so it is very important for us to understand that what are the information which is optional in nature and what are the information which is mandatory in nature right so here also just to ease the compliance and to make sure that you don't have a problem with all this thing what they have done they have actually made lot of thing as an optional in nature so you can accumulate the value and show that value rather than showing all this break up right similarly if we just see this break up of like input input service capital goods right this information is also never there in my gstr 3b so there also what government have done that all right don't worry about that i know that this information was never there in gstr 3b and anyhow doesn't matter whether it's an input or inverse uh, input service i don't even care about that right so in that particular case they have done one thing that okay you don't have to give me a break up of whether it's a input or inverse input service you can merge this together and give that information but for capital goods because for capital goods is really very important for me to understand because we know that like if there is some reversal of the capital goods right so in that case i need that information so for that government says okay give me the separate information because anyhow you would have maintained your register for that 
so for capital goods you tell me separately but when it comes to input and input service you can just merge this two information together and show this two information together okay so if we look into this table number six itself what government have done i i will talk you talk about like what are the information optional nature and what are the information mandatory in nature in table number six but uh, so here if you just see what is the information which is optional nature or what is the information which is mandatory in nature so what they have done that okay 6a is anyhow auto populated this is something which is not even editable so this is auto populated and when it comes to this 6b to 6h you have to auto fill this basis whatever the ids you have claimed in 3b you just show the breakup over here so whatever the value coming in 6a right so same breakup you have to show from 6b to 6h that is what we have to do over here in respect to the breakup of input input services or capital good input and input service value you can merge together and show under input and capital good information you have to give separately now in respect of this information also because when it comes to this rcm thing or all of this thing right so what they're saying that okay you also don't have to worry about that part you can merge these two information together like you can merge the information of table number 6c and 6d together and just show the entire information under 6c so that is also an option which has been given so where we can merge this information and accordingly show the information right so this is about table number 6 where i am just going to show the breakdown and if you look into this breakdown all of the information is actually available in my gsr 3b and the information which was not available in the 3b there the government have made it optional or asked us okay you can just merge this information and show it over here except for one thing which is reporting of the capital good information because that information if there is some itc i have claimed in respect of the capital goods that i have to calculate it separately and report in our table number 6 right so this was about table number 6 but now i will tell you one more important part we talked about table number 6 we said okay in table number 6a i am going to show the total itc which is there in 4a right which is 4a may nothing is a import of goods import of services rcm isd and all other itc that information is going to come over here let me ask you one simple question from all of you a very simple thing let's assume uh, you had purchased something from your vendor there was a total itc of rupees 10000 so you purchased from a vendor itc was 10000 you had claimed the itc also obviously uh, you were like okay you have fulfilled all the condition let's say it is coming in your gst 2b you have received the goods and services every all condition of section 16 was fulfilled and it was an eligible itc also you claim that itc in table number 4a5 of gst 3 now when you claimed itc let's say in the month of april you claimed that itc but what happened within 180 days you have not made the payment to this particular vendor and we all know that if we don't make the vendor, payment to the vendor on the time right then we have to do reverse this itc right now when you reverse this particular itc first let me ask you where exactly i am going to show this itc reversal in my gstr 3b so if i have to reverse this itc whether first my question is whether i am going to even show in my gstr 3b or not if i have to reverse certain itc so abhinav says yes obviously we have to reverse it and we have to show in 4b2 ami says 4b2 shekha says 4b2 manikantan says yes we have to reverse that itc so everyone is saying yes we have to reverse that itc and we are going to reverse that itc in 4b2 which is correct answer right which means now i have reversed it let's say in the month of uh, october i realized my mistake i have not made the payment i have also reversed that itc now let's say in the month of november right in the month of november i have actually made the payment to this vendor now whether i am eligible to reclaim this itc Rajni says yes. Shravan says yes. Shikhar says yes. Pratik says yes. Rahul says yes. Jignesh says yes. Everyone is saying yes. Now, when I reclaim the site, you see, I will fill this information table number four a five of gesture three b. That is how I am going to show, right? When I reclaim the site, you see, and I realize this, let's say in the month of November, I have to reclaim the site. You see, I will show this information table number four a five. That is how I am going to show that. I have to reclaim it. So assume this ITC I give an example of in that April month in four a five I would have shown ten thousand rupees, right? 
then uh, let's say in october what i have done i would have done some reversal under 4b2 of 10000 rupees right then i would have reclaimed that istc in the month of uh, let's say november again in 4a5 i would have shown 10000 rupees that is what i would have done right my question to all of you is in 6a in respect of the auto computed detail by the government because this is anyhow auto computed by the gstn we never tell the government that okay this is in respect of the reclaim of the itc right that information is never there or present in my gstr 3b my question to all of you over here is that in 6a whether you are going to see 20000 or you are going to see 10000 6a is auto computed by the government portal so 6a is auto computed by gstn and this is basis you have filed gstr 3b or of fy 2122 which means all the information which you have shown in table number 4a of gstr 3b for fy 2122 that information is going to come in 6a it will not consider any impact of 4b that is one thing we should remember before answering and now I could see there is a change in the answer because some people were asked, saying 10,000, some saying 20,000. So Nare says 20,000, Pavi says 20,000, Rahu says 10,000, Appan says 10,000. So I'm getting different answers over here. Now let me tell you one simple thing. See, I told you one simple thing that in 4A, sorry, in 6A, right? In table number 6A, the government is taking the value from your table number 4A of GSTR 3B. 4A of 3B. In 4A, in the month of April, I have kept 10,000 rupees. Then in the month of November, again, I have kept 10,000 rupees. So ultimately, when you look into table number 6A, you will be seeing 20,000. Why are you going to see 20,000? Why are I going to see 20,000 over there? Because obviously, government don't consider ITC reversal here. Since they don't consider ITC reversal here, there, that value will always be 20,000. Right? So now, one important part that 20,000, the value which I'm going to see over here, I have to clearly tell in 6H, right? In 6H, I have to say that there is an amount of ITC which is reclaimed. Because 10,000, I have reclaimed it, right? So here I will tell that breakup, okay. In that 6A above, there is a 10,000 which I have reclaimed. And the normal 10,000, first time when I would have claimed, I would have shown in 6B. So in 6B, I will show 10,000 and that amount which was reclaimed in the month of November, that breakup I have to show in 6H. So that ultimately the value which is coming in 6A of 20,000 matches with the breakdown which you are going to show from 6B to 6H. Right? This is how we have to report this value. But why I even ask this question? Because this is really very useful when you actually fill in your table number 8. Because table number 8 is actually very confusing. And there can be differences. And that's the one of the reasons that why you even receive the notice. Right? So we are going to focus on that part. But for that, you should actually understand that what can be the cases where you will actually see the differences. I could see Pankaj says there is no audio. Uh, is it like uh, with Pankaj or it is with everyone that you are not able to hear me? All right. Brajay says all okay. Shubha says all right. So I think it's fine. Then we may proceed further. So now when I talked about rights, 6, I focused only on the ITC part, which you have claimed in table number 4A of GSTR 3B. So that breakup I have shown here. Similarly, when it comes to 6B, right? So 6B to 6H, I said, okay, 6A may value is auto-computed. 6B to 6H, you just show the breakdown. Now referring to table number 7. Whatever the ITC reversals you have done in your GSTR 3B under table number 4B has to be coming under table number 7. Right? Whatever the reversals which you are going to do in table number 4B of GSTR 3B has to come in table number 7. Now let me ask you one another question and now let me refer to FI 2122 and I will also talk about like the changes which has been done by the government from your August 2022. What happened in this example and you have to answer me that how exactly you report this transition today and accordingly I will answer you. Let's say uh, in FI 2122 itself, let's say on 1st April, what happened? You purchased some food and beverages for your employee, right? So you purchased some food and beverages and assume that you also have paid some GST of 5,000 there. When you purchase this food and beverages, you have two options, right? 
when it comes to recording food and beverages when you make an entry in your erp and as shravan rightly said is an ineligible itc covered under section 17 subsection 5 which is perfectly right now my question is this was an ineligible itc which is covered under section 17 subsection number 5 when you get this entry how you record this entry in your erp either you have an option that first you show that okay this is an input gst and then you show the reversal of the same that's one way right and when you just show first claim and then reverse it then in 3b also first you're going to show in 4a5 then you do a reversal under 4b or the second option is that you directly you don't show in 4a5 you don't reverse under 4b or uh, to rather you just directly expense it out and most of the people used to expense it out and it comes to reporting in 3b we were not even reporting this transition right most of us were not even reporting and if some of us were even reporting we used to show that information in 4d1 right that is how we used to show and i could see the answer from many of you the other krishna says that uh, uh, we used to okay shushil says we used to expense it out amit says expense it out shavan says need to report all right so in most of the cases right we are saying i'm um, if i refer to fi 21 22 while we file our gst r 3b most of us used to expense it out we were not even disclosing and even if we are disclosing we used to disclose this information in 4d1 we were ne never adding that in 4a we were never reducing in or doing a reversal in 4b that is what we used to do right but now from the august 2022 changes things have changed right in this particular case if i purchase something it is even appearing in my 2b first i have to do claiming part which is i have to report that in 4a5 i also have to do a reversal under 4b one which is a permanent reversal and accordingly 4c 4c the value will be zero that is from august 2022 so anyhow we are not preparing gst 9 for fi 22 23 so that impact will anyhow be applicable only from the next year but now referring to the current year right when we are saying current year obviously i'm talking about fi 21 22 so fi 2022 if we are not reporting if we are not reporting this transition right in my gst 3b or even if i am reporting this transition in 4d1 then make sure you are not showing this information in table number 7 because sometimes we just get confused and we say okay there is some information in 7e as per section number 175 so i have to report it over here so remember you don't have to report this information over here even if you have reported this transition under 4d1 of your gst 3b here this information will come only when if first you had claimed that itc under 4a5 and you have also done the reversal under 4b2 if you have done the reversal under 4b2 in respect of the 175 then only you have to report that transition in table number 7 otherwise you don't have to show this transition in table number 7 so if you ask me table number 7 has the only information in respect of the itc reversal which you have done in your table number 4b of gst r 3b right but again the same question which we have here government asks for a lot of things right they say okay tell me as per rule number 37 as per 39 as per 42 as per 43 as per 17 5 right and there could be any other reverses too like rule as per 38 which is applicable for banking and all so now they were asking that okay there is lot of breakdowns but when we look into gst 3 b that breakdowns was never there right we never have that information in respect of the breakdowns and all right so here what the government says that okay don't worry about it you don't have to even give the breakdown over here you can just put every information under 7h so under 7h you can just tell me okay this was a total reversal so this breakdown is not even important for you it's optional in nature if you want to fill in well and good you can fill that but it's optional in nature you can always ignore that and put the entire itc reversal which you have done in your gst 3b for fi 21 22 under 7h right so this is like a table number 7 where we always show that itc reversals which you have done in your gst 3b for fi 21 22 we have to show in table number 7 so whatever the itc you have claimed in your gst 3b or fi 21 22 show in table 6 itc reversal in table number 4b of 3b of fi 21 22 show in table number 7 i will i know there is some question i could see what about the uh, the other thing i will even talk about what happened of the next year itc claim and all so we'll even talk about that but now let's first focus on table number 8 which is really very important because i gave you few examples right before even discussing i talked about few thing and this is something i'm going to use now let me first ask you there is table number 8a 
and when we talk about at we actually talk about there is an itc as per your gstr 2b right so here when there is an itc as per 2b what government is actually trying to do they are taking whatever the itc which has been supplied or whatever the itc available right so if we even look into 2b today right 2 2b actually have two information one is itc available one is itc not available right in 2b we have itc available itc not available now my ne next question to all of you when the comment auto fill because again this is auto computed by gst and again it is not editable at all it's a non editable field my question to all of you when we fill table number 8a or when the government actually auto compute table number 8a whether we only have the itc available or do we also or the gst in also add the itc not available which is there in 2b in your 8a so you can apply on the chat box whether it only has the itc available as per 2b or it also have the itc not available as per 2b in your table number 8a i could see the answer from manikanta who says uh, only the itc available abhinav says available suma says available information pato says it all the page says itc available only motushi says both shriram says to be available deepak says available all right so most of you are saying it only have the information respect of the itc available but some of you are also saying that it has both the information so now to just correct you here when the government auto fill right whenever the government show because here you will see only summary information we also get a document level information but in this summary information right in this summary information government only shows the itc available information it does not show the itc not available what could be the itc not available when there is a difference in place of supply right example could be let's say uh, i am registered in the state of karnataka and when i am registered in the state of karnataka i visited delhi i stayed in a hotel i asked a hotel okay you raise the invoice on my karnataka gstn that hotel had also raised a invoice on my karnataka gstn but we know as for the place of supply in case of emoy property the place of supply is a state where that emoy property is situated and this emoy property is situated in the state of delhi so that hotel here is going to charge cgst gst because supplier state was also delhi place of supply was also delhi so that person is going to charge cgst gst and when i receive this invoice right as a recipient i will be receiving this invoice in my karnataka gst my state is karnataka place of supply mentioned is delhi right in this particular case this transaction is considered as itc not available which means there is a difference between recipient place of supply and the place of supply mentioned by the supplier so this is itc not available and if you ask me whether that information comes in table number 8a or not my answer is no wherever there is a difference in the place of supply this information does not come in table number 8a now government never so whenever they compute the summary over here they never show this information right now let me ask you second important question and 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 other reason could be the itc not available because 164 which is time barred thing let's say there was a supplier who has filed his march 2022 return on 1st of december right there also that information will never come here right so that's a say time barred thing where again this information will never come in table number 8a let me ask you another important part can there be a transition in my gstr 2b let me ask you about 2b first can there be a transition in my gst at 2b where the suppliers files b2b invoice but that transition is covered under reverse charge and that person marks that as an rcm so whenever you receive that invoice you see that the rcm has been marked as y can there be a transition by the actual seller who says that this particular invoice is covered under reverse charge and you are able to see this invoice in your gst at 2b under reverse charge I could see answer from Partho. Partho says yes. Suma says yes. Manikantan says yes. Shushil says yes. Shubhas says yes. So all right, everyone is saying yes, and which is again the correct answer. So we are saying yes. There can be a B two B transaction which is appearing in my two B, but it is covered under reverse charge, which is perfectly okay. In two B, we always get this information. My question is whether in eight A summary. the invoices which was covered under reverse charge comes in table 8a summary or not vikas says no shushil says yes pratik says no what about others satish says yes sajji says yes shubhas says no all right so some are saying yes and some are saying no again the answer over here is if the transition is covered under reverse charge that will never fall in 8a right 
why i am even asking all these questions because very very important that while we have been filling table a day right we have done a proper reconciliation between the information between your 2b and the purchase register because if you don't do that we'll never know that what was an itc which was related to current year but have been came in the next year so we have to know that information so for that we should remember that if there are some transitions which is covered under reverse charge that will never be included in government ka 8a summary though when you get government document level detail because government also gave us a document level detail of table 8a so when you see that document level detail that documents would be present but in the summary they would have never accounted that document right so this is something which we should always keep in mind that while we are filling this that the document the reverse charge document will never be accounted in 8a summary now let me ask you another important question right so the third important part was that now what happened that uh, in the same example right i gave you one simple thing i i told you in 6a right when i was referring to table number 6a i said like uh, okay there you show most of the time only invoices in the debit note right the credit note information you anyhow do the reversal in uh, six uh, like you do the reversals under the 4b of gst or 3b so ultimately you show in table number 7 of gst and 9 you never show that information in table number 6 my question to all of you again here is when it comes to table number 8a summary by the government whether you only have the sum of invoices and the debit note or you have invoices plus debit note minus credit note. abhinav says invoices debit note uh, manikanta says in including credit notes okay purna says table 17 18 mandatory or optional uh, purna just to answer you table number 17 which is in respect of the hs and summary of the outward supply that is mandatory but when it comes to table number 18 which is in respect of inward supply right like hs and summary in respect of inward supply that is optional so hs and summary in respect of outward supply is a mandatory thing and the hs and summary in respect of the inward supply is the optional thing Ah, uh, Pratik says net. Rajesh says net. Rajni says invoice debit note and credit note. Shishi says net. Everyone says net, and which is again the right answer. So when it comes to table number eight, a right government actually shows the net figure. Okay, you all agreed to that. Now let me ask you one important part. I gave you one simple example, right? I talked about the reclaimed wall example. I told you that in April month you had claimed ten thousand ka ITC, right? You remember that I said that in the month of April you have claimed ten thousand ka ITC. When you have claimed that ITC, that transition was also appearing in two B. So in two B you were able to see ten thousand. Now my question is, when you have reclaimed that ITC in the month of November, whether in your GST or two B also the ten thousand was appearing? So in short, if we look into this both transition case where you have claimed that twenty thousand. In eight A, whether you will be seeing ten thousand or you are going to see twenty thousand. Nishi says ten thousand. Nilesh says ten thousand. Shushi says ten thousand. So everyone is saying ten thousand, right? Which is again correct. Now let me. I gave you two example, right? One of the one answer you gave that we have to show the net figure, and the second example you gave me that here the value will be only ten thousand. It will not consider any reclaim or amount, right? now just let's see there is a table called 8b right we have table called 8b 8b actually talks about itc as per the sum total of 6b and 6h right it is nothing but it says a 6b and 6h when we talk about 6b and the 6h 6b actually talks about the purchases which you have made from the registered person other than reverse charge right 6b actually was an itc which you have claimed in respect to the purchases which you have made from the registered person other than the reverse charge that was my 6b <coughs> when we talk about 6h it was an itc which you have reclaimed now my question is if i talk about the reclaimed in 8a you are seeing 10000 but when you talk about 6b right in 6b you will be seeing 20000 6a you will be seeing 10000 but when it comes to 6b you are going to see 20000 so which means ultimately when you see the 6d in 6d you will always see a difference right 
so this is one problem in the form itself so you have to again remember that if there is a difference it's okay there will be different definitely there will be difference but you should just document it that this is the reason of this differences so you should not worry about the difference rather you should know why there is a difference and just document it because tomorrow definitely the government will come up and ask that why there is a difference and you should be in the position to tell the government that hey i know that there is a difference this is the reason for the differences right so here whenever there is an itc which is reclaimed you will always see a differences between your 6a and 6b whenever you subtract this out right there will always be a difference now the second example <clears throat> you all told me that let's say there was an invoice of one uh, let's say there was an itc of 100 rupees and there was a credit note of 20 rupees and you all told me that in 8a i am going to show the net figure which means ultimately you are going to show 80 rupees right so whenever you are going to show 80 rupees which is the net figure in table number 8a my question to all of you again is in 8b what should be the value which is going to come 8b is going to come from your 6b and 6h so my question to you is i have an invoice of let's say 100 rupees i have a credit note of rupees 20 rupees in 6a i am going to show 80 rupees what would be the value which is going to come in 6b Mani says eighty, Nilesh says eighty, Nishi says eighty, Shushil says eighty. Abhinav says hundred, Subhat says eighty, Linesh says eighty. Okay, so let me remind one important part, right? You remember that when we talk about six A, six A, I said that this is an ITC which has been claimed as as in your GST three B in table number four A. 4a only talks about your invoices and the debit note because when it comes to credit note if you are auto computing this basis your gst at 2b the government consider the credit note under the itc reversal which is they consider that under 4b and when we when the government consider that as an itc reversal under the 4b which means if you would have filled 6b you would have only considered invoices and debit note which is the itc claim you would have never considered the itc reversal over there because itc reversal you would have shown in table number 7 so now if we look into 6b right even in 6a when you have a net figure of 80 rupees but when you look into 8b right sorry if when even when you see in 8a the figure was 80 rupees which is net figure but when you look into 8b you will see 100 rupees over here why because while you are filing your gst at 3b you have not considered a net figure in table number 4a 5 rather you had considered the invoices there in the credit note you have separately shown in 4b right so it again depends on how you report in gst at 3b if you are in 3b itself you are reporting a net figure in 4a 5 then in 6b you will always get 80 rupees but if in gst at 3b you are reporting the uh, the invoices debit note itc in 4 a and you are showing the credit note in 4b then here when you look into table number 8b you will always see 100 rupees right so that was an answer over here so which means again there would be a discrepancy between 8a and the 8b and again this is a genuine reason that there can be discrepancy but you have to again make a note that this was a discrepancy and i know this discrepancy is because of the credit note so that note you have to make it because even if tomorrow department comes with the notice you should be in a position to explain that that this is the reason and this itc reversal is already made in table number 7 right so this was about uh, this two part but now the other thing could be Uh, I could see there is another question from Purna who is asking in six bit day input input service and capital goods is mandatory or only input and capital goods. So Purna here when it comes to the breakup of input capital goods and input service right. So for input and input service information you can merge together and show under input. For capital good you have to mandatorily show it separately. Right. So input input service you can merge together and show it and for capital good you have to separately show it. now the another part over here is right now it's 8c i think this is one of the difficult thing where we most of the us we don't even understand how to even fill table number 8c so this is in respect of the itc so now when you actually reconcile right when you reconcile a take a document level information why i was on asking this right see you have to actually reconcile the a take document level information with your purchase register right you reconcile it remove all this reverse charge transaction you have to again remove that part right after reconciliation you know that this is an itc which was claimed in same year 
and if in ata document level information you find that this is some documents for which i have claimed that itc in the next year that information has to be reported in your table number 8c that was the main reason it becomes really very important that while you are filing your gstr 3b you always do a monthly reconciliation between your 2b and the pr and accordingly claim the itc in 3b so whenever you do a monthly reconciliation between your gstr 2b and your purchase register and claim itc you will always have a documentation trail of what itc is actually claimed in your gstr 3b right so whenever you have a documentation trail you would know that this is an itc which is appearing in my 2b but i have claimed this in the next year when i'm saying next year from your april 2022 till october 2022 so whatever the itc you have claimed from april 2022 till october 2022 in relation to the itc appearing in 8a has to be shown in table number 8c right so this is the information which you have to report over here so this is a kind of a reconciliation department is trying to do there can always be a difference here in 80 so it can be a positive difference as well as a negative difference and i gave you a few example right where there there will always be a difference but you should always be in a position to explain the differences right having difference is okay but not knowing the reason for the differences is a problem because definitely we know whenever there is a differences department will come and issue you the notice but whenever they come up you should be in a position to reply that hey these are the documents which i know that i have claimed in the next month these are the documents i have not even claimed so that information has to be shown here and if there was some itc right here which is coming in d and you have not availed you have to show it over here if something was ineligible you have to show it over here like many times as i gave you an example right to be me for example that food and beverages thing was coming you never claimed it you never reversed it right you never reported that entry so that information will automatically be coming under differences because it will never be falling in 68b uh, right i purchase some uh, let's say i purchase some food and beverages for let's say 10000 itc amount was involved that food and beverages amount will be appearing in 8a obviously right because the supplier was compliant he filed it so 10000 was coming in 8a in 8b since i have never claimed it i never reversed it i am not going with that august changes because there i am going to treat it very differently so in 8b because i never claimed it i never reversed it the entry is never going to come in 8b right i will never claim in the next year also so it will never come in 8c also so that 10000 rupees should directly fall under my 8f right so that information has to be shown in table number 8 this is how i have to report similarly if there is some igst which have been paid on import of goods right so if there is some igst which has been paid on import of goods that has to be shown under 8g and then we have to again show if there is an credit which has been availed so that information has to be shown in table number 8h ideally there won't be any differences between gl and uh, gnh but it can be a differences because if let's say if i have imported something where i cannot claim itc because it's an ineligible itc there i can have a differences but most of the time you will never see a differences between this so this was about table number 8 that how exactly we have to fill table number 8 now when it comes to table number 12 and 13 right so table number 13 is nothing but this is in relation to that itc which you have availed which was related to your current year but you have claimed in the next year right they can always be an itc which was there in the current year which is appearing in 2b right there was an itc which was even appearing in 2b but let's say you have received the goods in the next year let's say 31st march 2022 there was a supplier who had issued a invoice and when this supplier have issued this invoice this invoice is appearing in 2b when this invoice was appearing in 2b you could not claim itc because you never recorded this entry in your purchase register right since you have not received the goods so that entry right that information was related to your current year but you have claimed in the next year so that you have to show in table number 13 similarly if there were some reverses which you have done right there can be certain reverses which was related to current year but have been done in the next year that has to be reported in table number 13 one could be a one can one case could be let's say because of the rule number 42 because of rule number 42 every month i do certain reversal but then i have to recalculate every transaction right when i recalculate it, let's say the differential uh, the differential part i have done in month of april right so if i have done that then there that information has to be shown in table number 12 over here right so this is how i have to fill different tables of gstr 9
now is time for the case study so we are will try to understand like how much you are able to get it and meanwhile i will also uh, take certain uh, questions i know there are a lot of queries which have been asked on the chat box so i will also keep on taking all that queries over here but let's uh, uh, like see the case study number 1 which is a perfect case which is as per books it's 100 as per 2b also is 100 as per 3b also 100 my question to all of you was like how are you going to show this transition how much you are going to show in 6a obviously 6a is auto completed basis 3b so 100 will be coming 6b you have to just show up break up so 100 rupees will be coming 7 may you are not going to show anything 12 may you are not going to show anything 13 may also you are not going to show anything 8a also because in 2b 100 was coming so in 8a also 100 will come 8b because that has been populated from 6b and 6s so in 8b also 100 will come so this is how this transition will be done which is a very rare case because we know most of the time either our suppliers are not compliant or i have not claimed it so there is a timing difference there can be lot of things where this will never match but this is how we have to report this transition so 6a 100 6b also 100 7 may we not show anything 12 will not show anything 13 also will not show anything now uh, i think there is another question is from rajini who is asking table number 15 demand show cause noted refunds are based on financial which financial rate in which paid and received so rajini again when it comes to this uh, demand show cause notice right it is related to that particular financial year so we have to put that information here but again this is optional in nature so if you ask me the entire information right in that other sections like refunds demand and all it's optional in nature it's again on you whether you want to report it or not so you can even skip reporting that but if you are reporting you have to do it for the same financial year uh so now the next part over here is let's talk about the second case as per 2b there was 110 but you know that you were allowed to claim the itc of only 100 and in 3b also you claimed 100 how are you going to report this in different tables of your gstr 9 uh, i could see the answer from abhinav abhinav says table number 600 what about others deepak says 100 ravi says 100 So if you ask me right again in 6a you will see 100 and 6b also you will see 100 2b may you will be getting 110 which you can always show that there is a 10 rupees ka differences and you can say it's an ineligible itc because it was never allowed to be claimed now let's talk about the other example the itc was available in the books of account but you claimed less it can also be cases that where you have not claimed the itc right now question is how are you going to report this transition in the different tables of gstr 9 so here again when we just look into this 6a because i claimed only 80 right because ultimately what is coming in 3b will come in 6a and in 6b to 6h i any have to show that same break up so in 6a we'll see 80 6b also we'll see 80 8b automatically it gets reflected from there we'll see 80 in 2b we see 110 there will always be a difference of 30 and we can always say that this is the credit which is available but i have not claimed but in case assume that you would have claimed let's say you have claimed this itc in the next year so if you have already claimed this itc in the next year then show this information in table number 8c right so there exactly we have to show this information so if you have claimed in the next year show this information in 8c as well as in table number 13 of gstr 9 form so there exactly we have to show this information now let's talk about the next one <clears throat> there was a itc as per books 110 what i have done i have actually claimed in the next year 80 i claimed in the same year and 30 i have claimed in the next year how exactly i am going to report this transition in gstr 9 so here okay i am not getting any answer so are we not sure about answer or is taking time for you to type it i could see the answer from abhinav abhinav says 6a 86a okay 6b 88c 30 okay so here the answer would be in 6a will show 80 because i have claimed in 3b 80 rupees 6b also because we just have to show a breakdown so we'll show 80 13 may will show 30 because ultimately i have claimed in the next year which was related to the current year 
so there i'm going to show 38 a because it is coming from 2b so it will show 110 8 b i will show 80 rupees and because i have claimed in the next year so i'm going to show 30 right so this is about the different transition let's say what happened there was a mistake it can also be a mistake right it's a very normal thing to have a mistake i wrongly claimed it 2 b it was not even coming books may also it was not coming in gsta 3b i wrongly claimed that i see so in 3b what happened i claimed wrongly but i reversed that in the next year also how i'm going to report this transition I claimed that IDC, but I have wrongly, uh, I wrongly claimed the IDC, but later I realized my mistake and I reversed that in the next year, how I'm going to report this transaction. Okay, Abhinav says, I think liable to pay any interest. Maybe Abhinav, it again depends on your liability. So if you have not utilized that ITC, then you don't have to pay any interest. But if you have utilized also this ITC, then yes, you have to pay the interest. Okay, so I'm getting different answers over here. So just to answer you, see in 6A, right? 6A, since I had claimed this ITC in FI 21-22, automatically the GSTN will auto-populate and will show 100 rupees. 6B, because I just said you have to just show the breakdown. So you just show 100 rupees here. Because in the next year, I have done the reversal. So in table number 12, you will show 100. Because this is in relation to the reversal which has been done in the next year, which was related to current year. So in table number 12, you just show 100 rupees. 8A, nothing will be coming. 8B, automatically 100 will be coming. 8C, you will see a minus 100 ka difference, right? So that difference is okay. But you have to make sure that the difference amount you have also shown in table number 12, right? So that is how you have to show this information. I could see there's a next question from Puna who's asking table number 14 of 9C expenditure recon for ITC is mandatory or optional. Puna, that's optional in nature. So that expense label details, right, which we have to file in GST and 9C, that's optional in nature. So it's on you if you want to fill in or not, but it's optional in nature. So the next question is this one. As per books 110, as per 3B, you claimed 110, but in 2B, there was nothing. How are you going to report this information in GST and 9? Uh, meanwhile, I could see there's a next question from Vikas who's asking, can we carry, carry the credit note difference in table number 6J, such as gross ITC in 6A and ITC? See, uh, Vikas, we can do, but I would never suggest you to do that. Because see, anyhow, in 8A and 8B, you will have a differences. So that is for sure. So it's better that you don't make the differences in table number 6 or table number 7. Show that as per your GSTA 3B itself. And whatever the adjustments you have to make, make that in table number 8. And accordingly, make a documentation for that so that tomorrow even department comes in, you are in the position to tell them. So I would say always do that in 8 and not do in table number 6. So I'm also receiving different answers. So what is the answer over here? Table number 6, because I claimed 110, I will show 110. And there will always be differences of 110 which will be appearing in here. See, if we talk about FI 21-22, definitely you're going to receive the notice. And in future, you may have to even reverse the ITC in respect of this transaction, right? So this was in respect of the ITC thing, right? We talked about the liability, like how to even report the liability. We also talked about ITC, right? How we have to even report the ITC and the reversal in different tables of GST and 9. So that is what we have even discussed. Now, maybe I will just ask all of you, because we also have a spillover effect. I will even take that, but... Before that, I want to see if you are able to understand this part. What are you able to now? If I ask you, can you fill your table number 4, 5, 10, 11, and table number 14 of GST 9? And you can also fill table number 6, 7, table number 8, table number 12, and table number 13 or not. And regarding the other table, whatever the leftover tables we have, right? Only table number 17, which is in respect of your outward supply, which is HSN summary in respect of your outward supply, that's mandatory in nature. But other than that, all the other tables are optional in nature. So you can always ignore if you don't even want to fill in. So you don't have to mandatory fill that information. Now, regarding the outward HSN summary also, since it is mandatory from FI 21-22, one important part which you should remember, because we always say that, hey, anyhow, we have filed GST1. And when we talk about we have filed GST1, in the GST1, we already filed this HSN summary. So when we file this HSN summary, the government already have this information then the government can anyhow auto compute this information i'm assuming it's a correct information 
So there you should remember if for FY2122, the GSTN is not auto computing your HSN summary, the outward supply HSN summary. And the reason why they're not even doing it because we understand when we look into April 2021 return period, that time while we were even filing GST one and we were filing that HSN summary, right? The rate of tax column was never there. But when we look into GST 9, there's a rate of tax column over there where we have to give the rate of tax. So for that April 2021, we never submitted the rate of tax level information in that HSN summary. So that information was never available with the GSTN also. So that's the main reason this HSN summary, the output HSN summary is not auto computed uh, basis. You have filed GST1 because in the month of April, there would be certain differences. But from April till, uh, sorry, from May 2021 till like March 2022, everything was sorted. But there would always be differences you will see even when you try to create that HSN summary for your GST9 basis, your GST1. So you have to always do that basis sale register or you get that HSN summary for April month and then club that with the GST1 summary. That is how you have to do this. Hope uh, this part is clear to everyone. Uh, now my next question is from Rajini. Suppose we have claimed ITC in theory, but later on not utilized and claim refund, then how to reverse it? So if you have claimed that ITC, but you have not utilized it, right? So if you have not utilized that ITC, you can always reverse it by showing this information table number 4B. So in 4B, you can just show that information. So automatically that ITC will be reversed. Another question from Abhina who is asking if non-GST supply not reported in any 1 or 3B, do we still have to show in GST 9? Yes, Abhina, we should show because see, whatever we have missed reporting in either 1 or 3B, that can always be shown in your GST 9. But remember, you cannot claim ITC. So if you have forgot to claim any ITC in your GST 3B, you cannot claim ITC in your GST 9. But when it comes to liability, if you have forgot to pay any liability in your GST 3B, you can always report that information in your table or in your GST 9. Right? So this is something we have to do. Another question is from Jyoti who is saying import purchase IGST book but not reflecting in 2B next year up to when we can take IGST. Jyoti, in respect to the import of goods, right? Even if it is not reflecting in GST or 2B, I would recommend you can still go ahead and claim ITC because for claiming the ITC in respect of the import of goods, we are not dependent on the supplier or we are not even dependent on 2B. You just have to, uh, you can just directly claim it, but there is anyhow a functionality which is already given by the GST and where we can refresh this information from the IceGate portal. So I would just suggest if you can just uh, use that functionality and accordingly claim the ITC. Right? Right. So, so this is some, uh, I have taken some queries. I think there's another question on Prudhvi who's asking if any corrections are there in ITC for FI 21-20 and we should report now in October. Yes, Prudhvi, because this is a time period and we all know that the government have extended this time period now for, from the uh, this particular year, which is from FI 21-22. We can make any adjustments which was related to FI 2021 till October 2022 return period. So if you have missed any ITC which is related to FI 21-22, is always good that you claim it now itself, right? So for any missed ITC, you should claim now in the October 2022 return period itself. That's the last chance for you to claim any missed ITC. And even if you have to do certain adjustment, which was related to FI 21-22, you can always do it now. Another question from Divesh who is asking FI 2021 ITC claimed in 21-22, where to show in table number six. Divesh, if there is some ITC which is related to FI 21-22 and you have claimed, sorry, uh, there is some ITC which is related to FI 2021 and you have claimed in 21-22. So Divesh, automatically that information will be reflected in table number six, right? So table number six, if you know, right, what I said in 6A, you will see whatever the ITC which has been claimed in your GST 3B of FI 21-22, will come in 6A and you just have to show a breakup over there. So if there was some ITC which has been claimed in 21-22, even if for if it is for FI 2021, that will come in table number 6, right? And you just have to show that breakout, which is in 6B, it automatically this information will come in. So I think I have covered most of the query and some of the people are saying if we can just have another session for the remaining part. I know it's like too hectic for you to even gather for this two hours, uh, continuously two hours. So now I think uh, most of the things would be bouncing uh, for you. Uh, but anyhow, uh, we'll even take a next session. So if you want, we can have a next session for the same. And regarding the spillover effect also, right, I will we'll do one thing, we'll just share this PPT with all of you. 
So you can always refer to this PPT and you try to answer yourself and see if you are able to, because this is some case study and along with that, you try to populate this information in table number GST9 and see if you are correctly answering or not. So in this way, you will know that whether the information has been populated correctly or not. So this is one way of doing that. So we'll anyhow share this PPT and I know that most of you have already asked for the uh, PPT. So we will be sharing this PPT also with all of you. And in case still, if you don't receive the PPT, uh, you can please mail us at GST support at the rate clear text dot in. So that's our mail ID. So we'll share the PPT with you over, over your mail ID. So our mail ID is GST support at the rate clear text dot in. Or uh, you can even mail me. My mail ID is surbhi at the rate clear text dot in. It's S U R B H I surbhi at the rate clear text dot in, right? So you can even mail me at surbhi at the rate clear text dot in. So in case you don't receive PPT, you can always mail me. Another question is from Linesh who's asking, we have not filed annual return for three years. Can we file in the current year for all the three years? Linesh, we can do that, but I would just uh, uh, say or ask one thing, whether it was even mandatory for you to uh, for filing GST or nine for you or not. So if your turnover was less than two crore, right? So in that case, I would suggest not to file it now. But if it was more than that, then yes, you can always file the GST or nine for all of your th uh, three years now itself, but you also have to pay the late fees over there. So uh, if you have more questions, you can just please uh, reply on the chat box so that I can answer your queries. Another question from Abhinav who is asking, car purchased by company FI 1819 for 5 lakh plus GST, GST input not taken, car sold in FI 2122 for 1 lakh. Are we supposed to charge GST on the car sale? Car trading is not our business. So Abhinav, like if you have not even claimed that ITC, right? When you have not claimed that ITC, you don't even have to charge GST on that. Like there is a question of an ITC reversal if you would have claimed that ITC because you have already sold in between. But since you have not even claimed it, right? So there is no question of reversal and you don't even have to charge any GST on that. Uh, another question from Divesh. <laughs> if you have declared 2021 ITC in 6P, then 8A will show the differences. Divesh, yes, there would be a differences in 8A, but you also have to at the same time understand, right? In uh, uh, when we look into the 8A, right, there can be differences. But again, when you're looking into a reconciliation between 8A and the 8B, right, 8B have an ITC which you have claimed in 3B. You also have to look into your previous year card table number 13 and table number 12 because this was some ITC you would have also shown, right? This is some ITC you would have shown in table number. Uh, 13 that there was some ITC which is related to currently have been claimed in the next year. So then it will automatically match. So that is how you can actually explain this information to the government that this is some ITC related to the current year have been claimed in the next year. So hope you are most of the queries are done. Still, if I have not answered, I would just suggest if you can just uh, reply me or mail me at surbi at the rate cleartext.in. So I will be happy to reply you over there. And so this was all about the ITC section. And this was all about the reporting while apart. And as I told you, there are other sections also. So one, two, three is nothing. It's just an auto-populated field where we just tell what is financial year, GST level, legal name, and the trade name. Then table number 14 is nothing but a differential taxes which we have to pay. Table number 15, it is nothing. It's a demand and referred section, but it's optional in nature. So you can even ignore that. Table 17 have become mandatory from FI 21-22. So you just make sure that you file this information in table number 17, which is related to HSN summary of output supply. Table 18 is still optional in nature and table 19 is applicable only when you file your GST 9 after 31st December. Right. So this was all about GSTR 9 and hope you understand uh, and you know now how to even prepare GSTR 9. I know at some part I was too fast because I know that was not too much relevant. So where I felt it is not too much relevant, I was very fast over there. Uh, but still, uh, if you have certain confusion, still if you have certain queries, it's always uh, you can always mail us at GST support at the rate clear text dot in or you can even mail me at surbi at the rate clear text dot in. And regarding the PPT, we will also be sharing this PPT with all of you. Still, in case you don't receive this PPT, you can even mail me at surbi at the rate clear text in or GST support at the rate clear text in. So we'll just mail it over there. Another question from Sudeep who is asking if I entered any figure wrong, will it 
treat as a final as there is no revised return yes sudeep that will be treated as a final return so it is always good that while you are filing your gst9 you are very careful about filing your gst9 because once you made any mistake right it's very difficult for you to revise that return so you cannot revise that particular return another question from devesh who's i think can we show this itc in table uh, 6j sorry devesh uh, which itc are you referring to so if you can elaborate more on the same it will be great another question from nishit who is asking if you have paid liability in the next year but correctly in gst1 in current year then whether that liability will appear in table number 4 so anishit uh, if you have paid any liability in the next year right uh, but correctly in gst1 so if you just see the as per the government auto populated detail right it will be appearing in table number 4 but it's always good that if you have paid any liability in the next year which was related to the current year you show that information in table number 10 so that would be the correct way of showing this information right so with this will uh, i think there is also one feedback form which has been circulated and i think you would be able to see that particular feedback form on your screen so you can also fill in your feedback over there and i know some of you are also asking if we can have one more session for the remaining part so we'll try to even conduct another round of a session where we can continue with this uh, where we can actually talk about the spillover effect and also gst 9c so i know we were able to cover only gst 9 today session so we'll have a separate session for gst 9c where we'll talk about entire 9c and uh, okay i think abhinav says if we can have session on 21st because we have to file 3b yeah definitely we'll try to have the session the next session only after 20th so that you can uh, focus on filing just a 3b but just make sure if there are certain adjustments which you have still not done for fi 21 22 just do it while filing your gst 3b if you have not claimed certain itc which was related to fi 21 22 just claim it now because this is the last chance to claim any itc which is related to fi 21 22 right so this always advise because in gst 9 form or through gst 9 form you cannot even claim that itc so with this we'll uh, uh, close the session so thank you thank you very much thank you for attending the session and hope it was uh, valuable for you and i could uh, add some value to your knowledge uh, still in case i was not able to answer any of your queries uh, please mail me at surbhi@clearttext.in or you can mail me at gst_support@clearttext.in so i will be happy to reply you over there with this thank you thank you very much